I want to start out by saying that for the first time ever, a developer of one of the games that I reviewed commented on one of my videos, and it was Aaron Nimoten, if I butchered that I'm sorry, who worked on the first Madagascar game. He was really cool about everything that I said and even gave a bunch of insight on what the development of the game was like and has answered a bunch of questions that I had as well as from other people. So you can ask him about stuff there, but it's really cool seeing that. And Mr. Nimoyton, if again, that's how it's pronounced. And if you're watching this video, thank you, because I never thought that something like that would happen with any of my videos. And speaking of Madagascar, on to the video. Madagascar 3 Europe's Most Wanted The finale of the Madagascar trilogy, at least for now, maybe a fourth movie will exist at some point, revolving around the gang trying to get back to New York through the traveling and failing circus while avoiding capture from animal control. In the end, they learn that their journeys have changed them drastically, resulting in them staying in the circus. I believe the reception for this movie is about the same as the previous two, being a fine end to the series, again, for now, but as per usual, we aren't reviewing the movie. One thing I didn't mention when it came to the videos for the Madagascar games based on the movies is that those were both made by the same development team, Toys for Bob. Madagascar 2 was the last license-based game they did as they went on to make the Skylander games and also the remakes for the Crash and Spyro games. This game was made by a different development team, Monkey Bar Games. Let's see what other games they made. Okay, I haven't reviewed that many games made by them, so I will give the benefit of the doubt, but these guys have a pretty high standard to reach for, and based off of the games that I have played, they're on some thin ice. So today, I'll be looking over the Madagascar 3 video game to see how this video game trilogy ends. This game, similar to the previous games, retells the events from the movie, but this time it's more of an after-the-fact thing told by Mason and King Julian to the player. Now, this game actually tells the events of the movie the most accurately out of the three main games. The only part of the movie that is not shown at all is the beginning where everyone leaves, ends up in Europe, and then hops aboard the departing circus train. It being so accurate would be a good thing if it actually was displayed in an interesting way. Toy Story 3 had the events retold while the toys were playing a board game, while also letting the toys who didn't take part in the adventure know what happened. Shrek the Third had a whole puppet performance based off of it, which fits very well to that series, and Chicken Little Ace in Action had the characters playing the game alongside the player, where they could make a bunch of jokes about gaming culture in general and just how the game was. But here, the story is told by two characters talking to the player, and that's really it. And I'm going into the presentation a little bit early here, but the way that the story is presented makes it more of a told story than a shown story. The blanks are filled in through dialogue and nothing else, which all in all just makes you care significantly less about these scenes, especially if you already know what happens, which is assumed that you do. Might as well follow up on what I ended off the story segment with. These scenes are almost the only time in the entire game where facial animations are a prominent feature. Due to this, every scene that isn't this is just boring as most of it doesn't have nearly as much style put towards it. Same thing with the load screens. I love the postcards from the previous games even if the second game was inferior to the first one. Here, the characters have their heads on chess pieces leaving a train to whatever location they're going to. This is actually the first game that had load screens I flat out didn't like. Considering that the game travels more in this movie than any other, having postcards for the load screens actually make the most sense to do here, but instead, it's this. Which, even in terms of the movie, I feel like doesn't make much sense. Even graphically, I'm kinda questioning stuff. In terms of models, I'd argue this game has the best ones. Unfortunately, cutscenes don't make much use of them, and environments look fine. I actually really liked walking around London with the neon lights and the sky color, but everywhere else is kinda meh in comparison. It just feels like there's no flair to anything, because those special cutscenes aren't there. At the very least, the presentation isn't all disappointment. The music is pretty good. Each area has two versions of a song, with the second one being more energetic, and each circus thankfully has their own theme. It still doesn't compare to the other games though. I mean, those games had some bangers of songs. Again, this soundtrack ain't bad, but pales in comparison. 
and most of the voice actors are actually the same from the Madagascar 2 game, aside from Skipper being from the movie. Good, they, they got that right at least. Vitaly's voice actor even reprised the role, which is very surprising since none of the other Madagascar 3 characters did. Granted, he doesn't have that many lines, but still having the original voice actor is never a bad thing. At least for now. I've always said stuff like that, only to be proven wrong at some point. The humor for the first time is actually a mixed bag, because a large amount of it is actually really good and got a pretty decent chuckle out of me, while others are referential to the previous movies and show off each character's personality. But then some feel just borderline offensive? Like the equivalent of a British joke is made, and normally those are funny and ironic IRL, but hearing it in a game isn't very funny. Also, King Julian is mad annoying 90% of the time, which makes these scenes even more fun to watch. There are three phases to each circus which has you play as a variety of characters throughout them. Firstly are the roaming sections where Skipper and or King Julian give you objectives to complete in preparation for the circus. You then go around different parts of Rome, Pisa, Paris, and London in groups of two that the game gives you between Alex, Marty, Melman, and Gloria. Though each character has some unique actions, every character shares some general abilities, such as activating some machines, pushing boxes, and stuff like that. Alex is the only character that can double jump and press the circle button to swing on bars and land on small precise points. I know I'm playing on Xbox so it's actually jump and press the B button, but that doesn't work well for a Sly Cooper joke, so shut up. He can also roar, which is used to scare away birds that block interactable objects. Marty is able to jump off of ramps, which is reminiscent of the opening scene of the first movie. I know the first game had it, but hey, this makes sense rather than it being a pseudo double jump. Additionally, he can kick destructible boxes and launch himself out of cannons to another area. Gloria also has her hip bump to break boxes, but she has the option of swimming in and underwater where she can shoot bubbles to lift objects. Her and Melman share the ability to walk on tight ropes, with Melman also being able to scare birds with a sneeze similar to Alex, but it also works as a stomp, which can destroy certain objects from on top of them or knock them over. As you navigate the cities, animal control is on the lookout for you, and a lion, hippo, giraffe, and zebra running around isn't exactly hard to spot. Animal control can catch on to you if you attract too much attention from people, so to avoid this, you have disguises you can put on, which lets you move through people undetected, but limits your movement options while the disguise is on. Next, there's the publicity stage, where you have to advertise about the circus by setting up posters, letters, and decorations in the local area. There are also other minigames where you obtain additional supplies in a limited time and run away from Dubois, typically after making a bunch of noise after one of our previous tasks. Then you perform small platforming stunts in the area you advertised in, along with a much larger stunt involving the defamation of a European landmark via penguin construction. Finally is the circus, where you participate in multiple performances, but not before Phil and Mason give out tickets and snacks for the viewers to enjoy during the show. Marty and Stefano fire out of a cannon while trying to avoid obstacles and hit as many balloons as possible before the end of their act. In Melman and Gloria's tightrope showcase, they walk along the same rope, crossing past each other and dodging any distractions along the way. Natali's performance has him jump through multiple flaming rings, with King Julian providing drum roll accompaniment. Lastly, Alex and Gia do trapeze movements trying to collect as many balloons as possible, with the ability to swing off of each other if they work together. At the end of the circus and prior minigames, you are ranked for how well you performed in them. The use of multiple characters is nice. It's a lot more reminiscent of how the first game played aside from the lack of totem pole and a much larger focus on duos than typically a single character getting to the end of the level. Each character does have a use in this game without feeling like they overshadow another. And I know that Melvin and Gloria tightrope walking is based on the movie, but it's just weird that Alex lost that ability considering the previous two games. Free roaming also allows you to use every character to explore wherever, including areas they aren't able to go to in the story mode. The entire game is boring. Let's try and take this one step at a time, because a lot of this stuff connects with each other. Starting off, you move at a snail's pace the whole game. And when you compare it to the other Madagascar games, it feels like you're playing Smash Bros. Brawl after playing Melee and Ultimate. It takes 
forever to get from point A to B, and I almost argue a large amount of the game time would be reduced just by having the running speed from the second game. It doesn't help that the stealth in this game is atrocious too. Unlike every other game, roaming is almost entirely stealth based, yet somehow, Every other game, which, what, only had two stealth levels max, had better stealth than this game does. Even the GBA Penguins game is better at stealth than this. Practically every element of the stealth sucks. You know how you're already stupidly slow? Well, what if I told you that while in a disguise, you move even slower? Now, typically when something like this is done, your movement options tend to be drastically reduced, so I'm not upset at the idea. But when your movement is already bad to begin with, moving even slower just puts me to sleep. And you're almost pressured to wear a disguise about 80% of the time you're in the streets because there are people almost everywhere. Even so much as turning the camera around will reveal people who were not there more than 2 seconds ago. However, getting caught is so laughably hard that wearing disguises does almost nothing but slow you down. It takes a lot of constant crowd attention for animal control to actually do anything unless you're right in front of them. Also, disguises don't work on them, which kind of defeats the entire point of being around them at all, but whatever. Animal control is slow at moving, just like you, and dodging their attacks is as easy as turning any direction that isn't the one you were already going. Even if you do get caught, you can break out of their grasp. The only time in this game I got caught was when I said, screw it, I'm not disguising, it's just slowing me down, only for Dubois to spawn on top of me, who is the only one that can capture you without giving you a chance to escape, apparently. So to get caught, you have to either intentionally try to, or be incredibly unlucky. The punishment for getting caught is restarting the entire mission, regardless of how long it is. And normally, this might actually be a bad thing, but because it's so difficult to get caught, it's actually a fair punishment. But an overall mechanic being so poor that the punishment for failing goes from questionable to positive is not a good thing. The AI is aggravating as well. Well, which AI in particular? All of them. Every single AI sucks. I already talked about animal control, but your partners consistently move when you don't want them to, and don't move when you do. This can result in them falling off of areas, making you have to switch to them so you can slowly go back and climb back up, or they'll just stand in one spot. Unless you're playing co-op or switching between characters constantly, at some point you're gonna ask yourself, why on earth is Alex on the other side of London right now? Then the circuses and special events. Why are the partner's AI able to affect the overall team score? I can end up doing super well, but if the AI isn't working with me, an especially big case with trapeze, or just choosing to mess up, an extremely big case if the computer is Vitali, my overall score is hindered because of it. Why do this if the AI sucks? Granted, actually doing well in these don't do anything aside from trying to get achievements, but even still, it's annoying that my AI is being stupid. Lastly, this game is mind-numbingly repetitive, and there's almost no fun anywhere. Not only do you have everything previous that I mentioned, but the circuses all play out the exact same. The environment doesn't even change aside from the last one of the game. That aspect, however, is made very much mute when you have that circus, IMMEDIATELY after the previous circus. And then Skipper and Julian end up making jokes about how some of the objectives wouldn't even exist if the penguins didn't keep spreading stuff that they already collected around the city for us to get. Why are 90% of the objectives in this game pointlessly manufactured only for the game to make jokes about it? <sighs> also, in case you haven't realized yet, you can't play as the penguins in this game. No wonder it sucks. There's an extra minigame called Banana Dash, where you collect as many bananas as Phil and Mason. It's such a pointless minigame. It lasts a minute and is only there for a single achievement, since doing good in it doesn't do anything else. Also, I didn't even mention the collectibles that Alex, Marty, Gloria, and Milman can get, because they don't give anything as far as I'm aware. I decided to not collect them after spending way too much time looking for them than I honestly should have. But they don't even give alternate disguises, which could have been at least something worthwhile. Maybe even potentially references to costumes from the first two games, but 
nah. I even tried using a cheat code to unlock all the costumes, and apparently, I had already unlocked them all, so... This is the worst game in the series. Yes, even Madagascar Karts is better. I want to go back to that developer from the first game that I mentioned at the beginning of this review. All of the strange stuff that happened with that game happened because of multiple reasons, but one of them was because it was just fun. As weird as it was, it was fun and interesting for them to make, and it was the same way to play and talk about. For whatever faults every other Madagascar game had, at the very least, some fun could be had no matter how chaotic or even pointless some of it was. But this game is a flat out boring disappointment, which as far as entertainment goes, is practically the ultimate sin. Even with following the story the most accurately out of the three games, there's no excitement, which is ironic coming from a game about a circus, and a real shame being a poor ending to the trilogy that was going very strong. Unless again, Madagascar 4 comes out, and that also has a game, but knowing how license-based games are today, I don't think a Madagascar 4 game is gonna happen. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern, and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. So as far as Madagascar 3 goes, this was the only game that I had not played prior to actually reviewing, and I heard some people say that it was actually like pretty bad, and I had my doubts, but I didn't think that it was this bad, and having the main Madagascar game series end this way is kinda sad, because now I don't have any other mainline Madagascar games to look forward to, and it ended off the way that it did. You had two really good games, and then one really bad game right at the end. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do this outro, and then I'm gonna play a good video game now. But if you have not already, make sure you guys go down to the description below because that's where all of my social medias are located. My Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord are all in the description and they are all ways for you guys to be notified whenever I make another video or have an update for the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more as well as share this video, <clears throat> as well as share this video out with your friends and family. But until the next video, take care.